thank you i am dr mustafa ajiz shuman welcome you all in uh, today's case discussion as you have been informed the decision this is the first ever sark radiation oncology symposium jointly organized by oncology club bangladesh and radiation knowledge a us based organization in the last two episode we have discussed the academic uh, points now in this uh, session we will discuss the lifetime case discussion and i would like to request all the participants uh, because this would be the case for your uh, planning competition uh, so let me introduce i am uh, dr mustafa ajiz shumun working as assistant professor and head of department of oncology kurmitra general hospital and beside this i am working as a consultant in university hospital a private hospital of bangladesh so without any delay we would like to proceed with this case discussion so this 42 years old female patient uh, presented with a lump in her left breast for two months on examination it was found that this mass was around 2 into 2.5 cm the location was upper outer quadrant of left breast uh, no axillary lymph node was found ultrasonogram breast with axilla are reported almost the same it was around 2 into 2.3 cm mass in left axilla without any adenopathy followed by ultrasonogram guided core biopsy and it comes with invasive ductal carcinoma grade 3 immunohistochemistry chemistry was done and it comes with a strong hormone positive with hr2 negative ki 6730% so with all these informations the tumor board decided for breast conserving surgery with a sentinel lymph node biopsy uh, considering her age and other factors post surgical adjuvant chemotherapy was advised with ac and thereafter whole breast radiation therapy with boost and hormone extended hormone therapy was advised so with this advice he was underwent a wide local excision with sentinel lymph node biopsy and post operative histopathology comes with 2.2 cm mass grade 3 infiltrating ductal carcinoma all the surgical margins are clear no lbsa and uh, node is negative so ultimately it comes with a stage 2a disease immunostate chemistry luminal a strong hormone positive and ki 67 so as we don't have the opportunity for don co type dx considering her age high grade ki 67 uh, 30% uh, she advised for four cycles chemotherapy and uh, she has already received four cycles chemotherapy with doxorubicin and cyclophosphamide and after completion of the chemotherapy she is now referred to a radiation oncologist for radiotherapy uh, regarding the radiotherapy the radiation oncology decided for whole breast radiation therapy with post as the axilla was clinically negative so uh, no regional nodal lymph radiation and dose uh, moderate hyperfractionation scheme was selected for tcra in 15 fraction with boost at tumor bed with 10 grain 5 fraction by photons and considering the techniques we opted for 3d crt and uh, free breathing uh, because uh, we are not very much familiar with dibs technology that's why free breathing uh, technology was advised so in the our next uh, few minutes uh, we would uh, discuss uh, keeping uh, keeping all these things mind and the point of discussion of my Uh, presentation uh, why the patient was opted for breast conservation therapy instead of mastectomy uh, why there is a role of radiation therapy after uh, breast conservation surgery and if we are opted for radiation therapy what is the role of this boost and how to localize this boost area and there is a dose scheme 10 to 16 gray uh, so which patients for Uh, which dose whom we should give 10 gray and whom we should give 16 gray and sometimes uh, it is said that the photon or electron may be advised them uh, what should be the ideal uh, technology instead of photon or electron uh, so i think uh, we should uh, take a uh, at first uh, uh, we should take a uh, advanced opinion we should take expert opinion from our chairperson prof kalisuji barganti regarding these issues Uh, after that we will discuss the fractionation because there are conventional moderate hypo more hyperfractionation cells are there 
So which one to pick? Uh, as you have seen that uh, whether there are some areas uh, who can be avoided with this radiation therapy. That means is there any group uh, who can really avoid uh, this radiation therapy? That means the de-escalation. De -escalation. And of course, the organ at risk and toxicity will be discussed. And at last, we'll discuss about the techniques, uh, which is which is uh, very uh, which is a very interesting area of discussion. So first, come to the point that the best conservation therapy versus mastectomy. So as you know, in Bangladesh, we have uh, uh, what I should say that uh, we have failed to popularize it. Uh, still, the most of the surgeons are preoccupied with the idea that the mastectomy is a better option. And the fear of the patients also uh, forced them to take the decision for mastectomy. But this is a very interesting paper. It is assumed that the breast conservation surgery is non inferior to mastectomy. But this uh, Dutch, uh, Dutch, Dutch paper published in 2016. Uh, this is a population-based uh, retrospective analysis uh, among 37,000 patients. And you can see, and they have found that 58.4% best conservation therapy versus 41.6% modified radical mastectomy. There's a huge number of patients. And finally, they have found that breast conservation surgery is better than mastectomy in respect of overall survival. It's a very interesting findings. Uh, but the question is why? Uh, there are different hypotheses, but the most uh, accepted hypothesis that, uh, is that, uh, that the subcutaneous lymphatics, uh, which are not addressed by surgery, probably radiation therapy is the answer. And this radiation therapy uh, might be uh, deal with this subcutaneous lymphatics. And this, this may be the answer of this increased overall survival. Uh, but uh, the message is very clear that uh, best conservation therapy, not only uh, non-inferior, but it is better in respect of overall survival for some groups of breast cancer patients. So this is the paper which was published in the, in the year of 2007. You can see the Philip Portman's, the former Mr. president, uh, Maria Cardeso and Zentilini. They have jointly published this paper that the less is more, breast conservative might be even better than mastectomy in early breast cancer patients. And at, they have uh, mentioned a statement that sometimes patients demand a mastectomy driven by fear. But we have to give them information that the breast conservation therapy might be a good option for them in respect of overall survival. So breast conservation therapy, not only non-inferior, sometimes it is better than mastectomy. So uh, what is the need of radiation therapy after conservation surgery? Here you can see, this is the early breast cancer trialist collaborative group meta-analysis published in Lancet Oncology 2011. And they have included 17 trials, more than 10,000 patients were there. And they have concluded that uh, giving radiation therapy after conservation surgery to breast, whole breast, you can see the 10 years, they can reduce recurrence by 15.7%. And by 15 years, the breast cancer related mortality by 4%. So they finally conclude that if you can avoid one just uh, regional local recurrence, uh, four regional local recurrence, 10 years, you can avoid at least one breast cancer death at 15 years. So this is the elaboration of that study. You can see that uh, VCT CG, uh, CG's uh, uh, meta-analysis published 2011. These are, uh, most of them are pathological node negative disease, early breast cancer. You can see that the best conservative surgery only uh, the result of recurrence, uh, 10 years, 35% were with the radiation therapy. It is around 19.3%. So there is a 15.7% uh, reduction of local regional recurrence by giving radiation therapy. And when you come to see the breast cancer rate date, it is around 4% and it ultimately reflects in overall uh, survival. If you see the forest plot, you can see that the breast conservation surgery followed by radiation therapy is better in comparison to every 
variables. Whatever the age, whatever the grade, whatever the size, whatever the surgery, in every aspect that this comes as a surgery plus RT is better. So there is no question about giving radiation therapy after breast conservation surgery. So we have decided to give uh, whole breast radiation therapy, but why this boost? Uh, what is the role of this boost and how to localize? And I have already mentioned what should be the dose or what should be the uh, energy, whether it's photon or electron. Uh, this is the paper which was published in, in 2015 in Lancet Oncology by Bart Link. Uh, he, he's, a very, he's a very famous uh, person in breast cancer management, uh, particularly for radiation therapy. Here you can see this red line is the no boost and this blue line is the post. So for those who are less than 40 years, you can see the hazard ratio of local regional recurrence is 56. That means almost 50% reduction in ipsilateral breast cancer recurrence rate. Uh, for 40 to 50 percent, though the line is not very far, but still it is significant. Uh, significant. So that this boost is definitely uh, giving better result uh, considering the ipsilateral post cancer recurrence. For 50 and 60 years, those it is not very significant. But we can state it that those are younger groups. The boost is an additional tools to reduce the ipsilateral breast cancer recurrence. There is another study that is the URTC study. It is a randomized control, randomized control trial published in uh, Journal of Medical Association Oncology 2017. Uh, you can see these, these that the hazard ratio is more uh, uh, more than the Bartal link. You can see the hazard ratio here is 0.37. And they have concluded that the absolute risk reduction 16% at 20 years, particularly for younger age group, the CIS. Uh, so probably we have got an idea why this boost, it, 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 it gives 50% relative risk reduction uh, for particularly for the younger age group, uh, but uh, those who are more than 50 years, uh, should, we can, uh, should we avoid radiation therapy for them? The answer is no. Uh, there are some specific subgroups, uh, those who can benefit from this uh, boost, or they are the grade three tumors, uh, extensive DCIS, uh, if there is lymphovascular invasion, positive, triple negative tumor. So if there is non-radical surgical excision, we should opt it for uh, surgery. Uh, if surgery is not possible, then we should give the additional, additional radiotherapy. But probably these are the group, uh, uh, those are the groups whom we can uh, give some additional dose that 16, 16 case. So localized uh, boost area is a really a uh, really a tough job a tough job here in Bangladesh because most of the times we uh, we did not see any surgical clips, uh, but in the real world during the uh, during the surgery, surgeons used to keep a uh, radiopic markers over there that is called the surgical clips, and by seeing the surgical clips, you can get an idea where was the tumor. Uh, so during the contouring session, this can help you to guide the area. But if the surgical margins are uh, not there, uh, the seroma area we consider as the tumor bed, and we use to this uh, seroma, seroma area as a uh, localization uh, marker for my localization marker uh, during uh, contouring session, during contouring. <laughs> now come to the point of the fractionation. Uh, uh, there are different types of fractionation. There is the conventional, conventional, moderate, hypo, more hypo. Which one to pick? You can see that the moderate hypo fractionation, the conventional fractionation, according to 50 gray in 25 to 88 uh, fractionations, in 1.82 gray per fraction, with typical boost to 10 uh, by 10 or 16 gray in two gray per fractions per day. Uh, but this is the this is the traditional. Uh, but after the moderate uh, hyperfractionation schemes uh, uh, become so popular, now it is endorsed by all the societies, and uh, they try to make it popular among the practitioners. You can see the shorter fraction schemes that the 40 gray in 15 or uh, 16 16 fractionation is now a popular choice. Uh, you can see, uh, this is the ESMO guidelines. It is level one evidence-based and the recommendation is uh, a, 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 a level A recommendation. 
Uh, you can see that the UKSTA trial, UKSTA trial, uh, here you can see that they have compared with uh, conventional fractionations with hyperfractionations. That is the 40 gray in 15 fraction. That means 2.67 gray per day. And the total treatment duration is three weeks. And regarding the local regional recurrence rate, these are very much comparable. Uh, this is the same dose that tried in the Dutch trial. They have treated, treated the same, they have treated with the same dose. Uh, but the Canadian trial, they have uh, tried with a uh, higher dose, that is the 42.5 in 16 fractions, that is the three weeks and one days. Uh, but uh, these are all comes with the equal local regional recurrence rate. So uh, these are these are these are the these are the evidence which helps us to uh, give us the confidence regarding uh, the practice changing concept from the conventional fractionation to hyperfractionations. Uh, but as we are uh, going with uh, dose per fraction, increased dose per fraction per uh, dose per fraction per day, uh, we are really concerned about the toxicities that is the cosmetics, and you can see. And uh, the start B trial, they have compared with the uh, compared with the cosmetics purpose, and they found that the very comparable cosmetics. But if you go through in details, you can see that the, at least the start B trial, the breast shrinkage, considering the breast shrinkage, you can see that the breast shrinkage is better with hyperfractionated, and it is statically significant. Not only the breast shrinkers, breast edema is better with this four tiger fractionations compared to conventional fractionation. So uh, considering the breast uh, cosmetics purpose, hyperfractionated is not only non-inferior, sometimes it is better than better in some cosmetics issues. Uh, so we have now, uh, we have now uh, we have now decided for moderate hyperfractionations. Now, uh, still uh, we are uh, three three weeks uh, dose duration, three weeks uh, duration duration treatment. So, is there any other option so we can uh, we can compress this treatment duration uh, any any further shorter? Uh, so, this these are the studies that is the fast and fast forward trial, and they have tried with conventional fractionations that is the five weeks treatment to five weeks but one uh, one one day per week with uh, six gray and one weeks per day uh, one uh, one week one days per weeks and with 5.6 gray total duration of the five weeks and you can see that the first trial regarding the toxicity issues uh, it is significantly high but you can see the first forward which is published in the may 2020 they have tried with the uh, conventional uh, moderate hyperfractionation uh, that uh, that is routinely practiced right now. That is the 14, 15, uh, 14 gray in 15 fraction. You can they have compared five into 5.4 gray in one week. That means every day five gray, five day treatments total 27 gray in one week, and uh, 26 gray in one week. That means five gray, 5.5, uh, 5.2 gray in five days total duration is one week. And you can see regarding the local regional recurrence, these are all equals and the normal tissue compliance. You can see uh, that this, uh, this 26 gray in five dose is not significant. So uh, this might be the area, this might be the area where the, where the uh, radiation oncologist are looking forward uh, to see what should be the uh, what should be the dose uh, fractionation? So should we uh, really uh, convert our practitioners practice from moderate hyperfractionation to uh, some more extreme fractionation? Uh, now come to see the de-escalation. Uh, de-escalation, you can see from this uh, from these uh, pictures uh, that during the course of time with the advance of surgery and the advance of radiation therapy uh, since 1980s, the rate of local recurrence are decreasing. In the 1980s, it was around 30%. In 1990, uh, with the advance of boost, you can see that the lines are uh, laser than the before, laser than the earlier years. And in 2003, in the young boost, uh, boost trial, uh, those who are very high risk group, you can see the local rates is very low. 
And so is there any groups whom we can really avoid this radiation therapy? Uh, so uh, there are some trials. They have tried to find out this answer. You can see the CLGB trial. They have tried that DCS uh, plus tamoxifen plus DCS plus tamoxifen RT. And they found that the local regional recurrence rate is high if we are, are going to avoid this radiation therapy. The Canadian trial is also find the same result. Uh, but the BASO2 trial, they have tried that the breast conservation surgery, the local regional rates at 10 years is 22%. But for if we, if we uh, consider it for one year, uh, that is the, the, if we give radiation therapy, uh, only, only breast conservation surgery, then the uh, recurrence is around 2%. Uh, if we give radiation therapy or tamoxifen, the recurrence rate is around 1% per year. And if we give all, then this is really less, really, really, really less. Uh, so these this trials did not find a, uh, find a decision, did not find a decision, but some trials are ongoing. Uh, so to find, is there any real, is there any group whom we can really avoid this radiation therapy? You can see there are some single arm trials. They have tried to find out some biomarkers, but in the PI67 on code IFDX or any other biomarkers, uh, keeping keeping these things uh, in the calculation, whether we really avoid this group from radiation therapy, and there are some randomized control trial. I hope uh, these trials will give us this result in the course of time. So organic risk and toxicity. The main aim of this radiation therapy is to maintain excellent local control, as well as the overall survival, as we have already mentioned. But at the same time, we want to reduce the toxicities because radiation therapy comes with uh, some toxicities, uh, breast shrinkage, fibrosis, raised pain, edema, uh, poor cosmosis, definitely there, there are some issues. And of course, for the left side of the breast, coronary events is a major area of concern. Uh, so you can see this is the paper which was published in New England Journal of Medicine in 2013. Here I can show that they, they have shown that with the increase of the mean dose of heart, the cardiac events increases. So we really need to check this uh, during this radiation therapy. Now come to the more, most important thing that is the techniques. Uh, so as you, as you know, there are different type of techniques. I, I, mainly, I, want to, I, may, I mainly want to highlight the heart uh, because uh, the heart is the major area of concern, particularly for the left breast. There are different technology to reduce the heart dose. The deep inspiration breathal technique is one of the most uh, emerging technologies and very popular. Uh, respiratory getting is another option, but it uh, but it needs some uh, high tech technologies. Prone positioning is one of the uh, one of the good technique, uh, particularly when it's a very large breast. Proton therapy, but in Bangladesh we are not in a position to discuss these uh, issues, and there are partial breast irradiation and of course the IMRT or PMAT technology are there. Uh, for uh, DIBS technology, you can see in free breathing, a very part of the heart uh, is within the uh, high, high dose regime. But when you are using this DIBS technology, you can see that there is a space between heart and this high dose regime, ultimately resulting a good cardiac mean dose. Uh, supine and uh, prone position, definitely in the supine uh, prone position, the breast is uh, outside the heart, the breast is outside the heart and it gives a comfortable zone to treat the patients during in, uh, in prone position. So there are some, uh, there, there, there are some dosimetric comparison between this uh, technology, 3D CRT, forward IMRT, VMAT. And you could see what which I want to mention there that even with a good 3D CRT, you can have a very good dosimetric uh, dosimetric uh, uh, results even with the 3D CRT and uh, field in field to field technology field in technology. Uh, so who, who do they don't have uh, who doesn't have any VMAT technology or IMRT or the variant of other fancy technologies, and they don't think uh, uh, they don't think themselves. Uh, poor uh, as because they, if they can use this TD, TDC or the technology, it might have very good tools to give a optimum dose to the, uh, to the breast. 
Uh, here is another another dosimetric comparison between free breathing and breath hold. Uh, you, as you can see, with breath hold, uh, the dose to all of the critical organs is uh, really good, particularly for the heart and in the vmat In every aspect, it is superior. Uh, except the contralateral breast, but uh, those who are very younger age, we should keep it in mind that the contralateral breast dose is the major, major, area, major area of concern. So we really uh, should uh, focus this area. So at last, this is the recommendations. You can see that all other endorsing societies, that is ASTRO, ISTRO, ESMO, and they have endorsed that post-operative art is strongly recommended because it uh, reduces the local recurrence as well as the breast control because breast cancer related mortality rate. Uh, and uh, boost is strongly recommended because uh, particularly for those younger, uh, younger than 50 years and some, some other groups, those who are 50 years. Uh, so I would like to request all the participants uh, to participate in the planning competition uh, and uh, yeah, try try yourselves and show us that even the 3D CRT can be a better option uh, for a optimum dose delivery for a left breast cancer patients. Thank you. Thank you all.